Yo, what is up? This is Brosis Effect. My name is Michael. This is my sister Nicole. And we're back at ya. We're here with another video today. Another Spongebob conspiracy theory video. It's actually the third one that we're watching and it's the Mrs. Puff theory. Yeah, I mean obviously Mrs. Puff has been in the episodes quite a bit, you know, as Spongebob's boating teacher. She's extremely afraid of Spongebob and has some PTSD whenever he comes along near her. Because uh, he's like a walking train wreck. Whenever she gets in an accident, she blows up like a She puffs puff up like a puff fish. Yeah, so I don't know what the theory could be, but I'm it's probably pretty accurate. And I'm She's sure probably got some like deep dark secret or like some past or it's just gonna show us things we didn't realize about mrs puff like her like her background or something she does on the side probably something like yeah, that yeah or she could be given the way the, the other videos purposely have been, making spongebob fails driver's us by teaching him the wrong way to drive this is not mrs puff you may think she's just SpongeBob's boating teacher, but you'd be very, very wrong. For years, she's been running from her dark and mysterious past. Damn it. It's finally caught up to her. And behind it all is a mastermind who's been secretly controlling her life and psychologically torturing her. If you guys thought my last two theories were mind blowing, get ready for my biggest conspiracy yet. This is the Mrs. Puff. I love that drawing of Mrs. Puff. I gotta start off by saying, wow, the reaction to my last two SpongeBob theories has been insane. How does she know? How does she know? Squilliam, you lying, deceiving. Who is that handsome young devil? <laughs> I'm glad you guys are enjoying my ridiculously deep dives into this show. I mean, I have to watch so much SpongeBob and read so much of the Wikipedia to put these theories together, but it's worth it because the writers actually take the time to set these things up. Now, a lot of people have been asking, Alex, how do you come up with these crazy conspiracy theories? Well, I always start these theories by looking for the moments in the show that seem to be implying more than they're letting on. Like I've said before, Spongebob is a weird show with lots of abstract humor, but I can usually understand the intent the writers had behind a weird joke. But then there's stuff like this. I hope I still remember how to do this. Yeah. It's so confusing yeah. and weird that it feels like the writers are trying to imply something <laughs> beyond just scene. weirdness for the sake of comedy. And nowhere in the show is there more of these moments than with Mrs. Puff. And once I started looking into it, it led me down the deepest rabbit hole I've ever seen from this show. So, let's begin. Uh-oh. Looks like I'm getting hacked by a hacker. I knew this would happen if I got too close to the truth. Well, it's a good thing this video is sponsored by NordVPN. If you're watching this video, then you're on the internet, which means at any moment you could be hacked by a cyber criminal. All of your privacy, all of your personal information, the hackers can the get horror. it all. They're probably hacking you right now. What are you even doing watching this video? You have to get out of here. We get the hell out of here. And let's use NordVPN, a people. service that can protect your privacy <laughs> while you're on the internet. We're not gonna ever get to the point where we're trying to sell something. And personal I can't appreciate so people who are really creative, though, to make the ad at least entertaining. You can also use to Dylan Dylan in Trouble is really good. Only be able to watch Dylan is in Trouble is really good at doing videos. that too with ads. Here's what I looked like before I used NordVPN. And here's what I look like now. Go to NordVPN.com slash Alex Bale. Now without further ado, let's begin the theme. Finally, let's, let's get into this. Wanna know this past. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher in Bikini Bottom. She's passed all of her students except for one, SpongeBob SquarePants. He's taken her driver's test hundreds of times and he always ends up failing it and causing destruction and chaos that usually ends up with Mrs. Puff going to jail, despite it not really being her fault. We also know that she was once married, but her husband was killed by fishermen. That's my driving teacher, Mrs. Puff. Mrs. Puff? Oh, she's married. Oh no, Mr. Krabs, she's single. Then what happened to Mr. Puff? Um, oh, I remember that. She doesn't like to talk about it. Throughout the show, there are moments like this that seem to be hinting at her having a dark, mysterious past. And in Season 2, Episode 10, No Free Rides, we get the biggest clue about who Mrs. Puff really is. After Spongebob fails the driving test yet again, Mrs. Puff has just had it with him and ends up just giving up and giving him his license even though he never really passed. She quickly realizes that this is a horrible idea and he'll probably end up destroying the entire town. Yeah. Pretty accurate. 
so much destruction. I love that. I love that fish. Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor. Who Remember this clip because it's going to be very important later on. And then she says this insanely revealing line. What have I done? Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. I'll have to move to a new city, start a new boating school with a new name. No, not again. No, not again. Again? Come on, it's like they're just begging someone to make a theory about this. So we now know Mrs. Puff was originally from a different town, she used to own a different boating school, and Mrs. Puff isn't even her real name. There's something in her past that she ran away from. Now, there's been some debate over whether she's actually referring to a new name for herself or for her boating school, but I do think she's talking about her own name. Because if she's trying to run away from something in her past, she wouldn't start a new boating school with her real name in the title. Now, when she says again, I don't think she's just referring to starting a new life. Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. Not again. I think at her previous mm. boating school, she had a terrible student just like SpongeBob, who she prematurely gave a license to, and it led to something so terrible happening that she had to run away and start a whole new life. In season three, episode five, Doing Time, we get a flashback to when she first opened up the school. This one's funny, it kept repeating that. Remember, over and over. Of my new boating school, yeah, I pledge that as long as a student is willing to learn, I shall never give up. Hi, I'm SpongeBob SquarePants. With the opening of this new boating school, let's keep in mind that this is not her first boating school. Maybe the whole reason she's making this pledge now at her second school is because she gave up on a student at her previous school, and that led to her having to run away and start a new life. She's pledging to never make the same mistake again. Now let's skip ahead to one of the newer episodes. Episodes. Season 12, episode 21, Lighthouse Louie, where Mrs. Puff has Spongebob organize all the stuff she keeps Didn't in the school's the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. There's it's lots of now. interesting things hidden in the background, but the first thing that caught my eye was this file labeled Mrs. Puff. It makes sense for a teacher to have files on all their students, mm -hmm. but why would she have a file about herself? But let's remember, she's not Mrs. Puff. That's a fake identity she created, and I'm willing to bet all of her fake identification documents are in this file. Back in No Free Rides, she just gives Spongebob a license that she already had for him. So she clearly makes these licenses and would probably know how to make fake identifications. But that's not the only hint like about the Mr. Krabs in this lighthouse. There is something in here that directly confirms all of this. As Spongebob swallows all of Mrs. Puff's junk, we see something very interesting for only a few frames. Deranged boat teacher makes getaway. Ten seasons later and the creators are still hiding stuff about Mrs. Puff fleeing her old life. It might not look like it at first, but we actually get a ton of new information from this newspaper. This is from the New Kelp Post, which tells us Mrs. Puff originally lived in New Kelp City. Then there's a caption that reads, Distracts authorities with balloon animals. Oh, and wow, that's that sick. The beginning, I hope I still remember how to do this. <laughs> yeah. So whenever Mrs. Puff That's makes so a getaway cool. or commits a crime, she leaves behind a balloon animal to distract the police. I'm telling you guys, these writers don't just do stuff randomly, they have reasons for everything. And the most damning piece of it's evidence sick. in this newspaper is actually the picture of Mrs. Puff. Kind of a strange photo, yeah. right? We have seen this she exact same younger. photo of her before. In the episode No Free Rides, when she imagines what would happen if SpongeBob got his license. Local consensus places the blame on this negligent, selfish driving instructor. This means that this isn't just her imagination of what might happen. This is also her remembering what happened when she lived in New Kelp City and prematurely gave one of her students a license. And I'm willing to bet that the fish reporting the news is the exact same one who reported about her in New Kelp City. Let me explain. We know from the episode Whatever Happened to Spongebob that reporters from the Bikini Bottom News can also work for the New Kelp City News. But the real reason I think this is because of his hair. In the entire show, we have never seen this fish reporter with hair before. Why would the creators go out of their way to add that detail? Because Mrs. Puff isn't imagining him as he looks now. She's remembering him from years ago when he used to have hair when he reported about her in New Kelp City. Mrs. Puff has been running from her past ever since and is now forced to relive her experience with an unteachable student through Spongebob. SpongeBob, but reliving this trauma has pushed her to the point of complete insanity. And trust me when I say that you have no idea how delusional she actually is. Oh boy. Another running gag throughout the series is Mrs. Puff's occasional nervous breakdowns or moments of insanity because of Spongebob, and they get more severe as the show continues. At first she did care for Spongebob, but in the newer episodes she literally tries to kill Spongebob just to get him out of her life. Even Spongebob just walking up to her gives her severe PTSD. 
Hi, Mrs. Bug. Ah! Hit the brakes! I did call it. Watch the tree! Laugh! Wait, Mrs. Pop! We're not driving! But these mostly <laughs> seem like just one-off moments. It's the break! For the most part, Mrs. Puff is still a functioning member of society. Right? right? Not really. I'm going to show you that she's actually much, much more insane and delusional than you may think. And some of the episodes she's in take place entirely in her own head. If we're talking about how insane Mrs. Puff is, there is no better place to start than the episode Doing Time. Once again, SpongeBob fails the boating test and causes destruction and chaos, which leads to Mrs. Puff going to jail. SpongeBob keeps breaking into jail to try and bust her out, but Mrs. Puff actually prefers being in jail over teaching him. We actually get another interesting line about Mrs. Puff's past in this episode. Okay, you can do this, Puff. You can get through this without losing your sanity. It's we don't want to go Again. So we know that Mrs. Puff has lost her sanity in the past, probably from her previous terrible student. But it seems like she's recovered since then, except in this episode she has a complete mental breakdown. SpongeBob keeps appearing in impossible places until she gets thrown into solitary confinement, where each wall of the room transforms into a giant SpongeBob face. Terrifying. And then the episode <laughs> ends in a way that's so weird and confusing that it rivals the infamous gorilla episode ending. As Mrs. Puff freaks out, she's suddenly transported back into the beginning of the episode when Spongebob was taking the test. Except this time, Spongebob gets arrested instead of her. Help! Help! No! Yep. Oh, this is not a good time! No! I can't believe it! It was all a dream! I'm not going to jail! Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. Ah! Yep. So what's really going on in this episode? Was the ending all in her head? Is Mrs. Puff just caught in an endless loop? I think this entire episode is inside of Mrs. Puff's head, and she's actually on the outside the whole time, but she's been imagining herself inside of prison. I can explain. Listen closely to what the police officer tells Mrs. Puff. I'm not going to jail! Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. Why would you go to jail? You already did your time. And then revealing she's still in a prison uniform despite being on the outside. So, this scene is obviously inside of her head, which means everything we see is symbolic. And if we can understand the symbolism of it, we can understand what's really going on with Mrs. Puff. Notice how she's suddenly wearing a black and white striped prison uniform, even though the entire episode she's been wearing this orange jumpsuit. Why would the creators go to the extra effort to draw a whole new prison uniform for her? Well, We've seen her wear this black and white prison uniform before, the very first time she went to prison back in Season 1, Episode 7, Hall Monitor. So when the police officer says, you've already done your time, he's referring to the first time she went to jail. But why is she still wearing that uniform outside of prison? Well, she may have gotten out of jail, but she was by no means free. Having to teach Spongebob is a prison in itself, <laughs> and she manifests that by believing she's in jail and wearing a prison uniform despite being on the outside. This entire episode, every time Spongebob magically appears, Appears, is all inside of her head. She is completely delusional, and hints that she's experiencing these hallucinations don't stop there. Just six episodes later, she goes to a house party Spongebob throws, and while everyone is talking and having a good time, in the background we see she's literally sitting by herself talking to an ice sculpture of Spongebob. You can't tell me this isn't intentional. Oh my gosh. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Now back in the episode No Free Rides, there is a very strange picture inside of Mrs. Puff's home. It's a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff inside of a picture of Mrs. Puff creating an infinite loop. This is something that has confused Spongebob fans for years. But like everything in the show, there is a reason for it being there. One of the Spongebob storyboard artists actually called it the biggest mystery in the entire show. Really? If you think about it, this is just like the end of Doing Time, where she's stuck in Inception. an infinite loop of Spongebob failing the driving test. Because it's all symbolic of what her life is just an endless cycle of Spongebob taking the test and failing, and no matter what she does to try and escape, she always ends Spongebob up- Spongebob is so much Just kick him out episode. of school! So this picture is another symbolic manifestation of what she's feeling. We even see another one of these pictures all the way in wow. Season 9, Episode 5, Bumper to Bumper. This is something that the show is consistently alluding to. Mrs. Puff is an unreliable narrator, and anything we see with her could potentially all be inside of her own head. In fact, I believe I found another episode that takes place inside of her head. In Season 9, Episode 7, Spongebob long pants. Spongebob goes to a different boating instructor and actually gets his license. But as soon as he does, we briefly cut to Mrs. Puff waking up. You pass. I finally got my driver's license. Oh, oh. Lock your doors. Bar your windows. It's the end of the world. Mm. Now, this seems like it's probably just a throwaway gag where Mrs. Puff somehow senses that Spongebob got his license and it causes her to wake up and freak out. You know, it's a good bit. It's funny. But I have a question. 
If the joke is that she's supposed to be waking up at the exact time Spongebob gets his license, how come she wakes up at night when Spongebob clearly gets his license during the day? Because this entire episode actually takes place inside of Mrs. Puff's head. And this is the only part of the episode in the real world. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about, but I'm glad it's over. Mm. But let me pause for a second. I'm sure some of you are already wondering if this contradicts my previous Spongebob video, The Television Theory. If you haven't watched that one, the gist of it is that the entire show is a documentary television show, and everything we see is actually being secretly filmed by scuba divers. And there's a ton of evidence to support it. I'm very proud of that video. You should definitely check it out. But if everything's supposed to be from a camera, then how are we seeing things from inside Mrs. Puff's head? In fact, how do we see dreams and flashbacks mm. and thought bubbles? Well, I think the the simple answer is that even though we view the show through an objective camera lens, the world itself still follows the rules of a cartoon. You can never tell another living soul. Wait, wait, hold on! What's that? My pen is out of ink. Plankton! He'll never get me formula. Not even in a flashback. In the world of SpongeBob, you can imagine something and other people can still see, record, or interact with it because that's just how cartoons work. Back to the theory, we know that her insanity has caused her to live a life of delusion, but if you remember back to the Lighthouse episode, she's also become an extreme hoarder, and looking at her collection of junk is like a look directly into her mind, so there's gotta be something we can learn about her from it. There's a picture of her boyfriend Mr. Krabs, the hall monitor belt she gives her students, the mean drawings her Peek students make her, me. Spongebob's diary, a boating safety helmet. Wait, <laughs> Spongebob's diary? Why does she have Spongebob's diary? The last time we saw that, it was safely put away in Spongebob's library. What's it doing in her lighthouse? And why does she have Squidward's painting? And a table from the Krusty Krab? She's a kleptomaniac. And, and Squidward's teddy bear? And the hair curlers Mr. Krabs had? And that statue of Squidward? And that diamond ring? And that crown? And that bucket of radioactive waste? And that jellyfish sign? Oh my god. Mrs. Puff is a kleptomaniac. Mrs. Puff has been stealing from everyone in Bikini Bottom. I can even prove that her pet snail from season three, episode 19 was stolen. My snail is up a tree. I've had her since I was a little girl. No! Hmm, you've had that snail since you've been a little girl. We've seen that huh. snail. Then how come that is the exact same snail Squidward had four episodes ago in the Great Snail Race? I wouldn't let Snelly here play with that mongrel. Snelly. She's a purebred. See, she even has her own papers. He even has her paperwork. <laughs> Mrs. Puff clearly stole the snail from Squidward. But why the hell would Mrs. Puff steal all this other junk? What possible use could she have for any of it? We could find the answer to that question by looking at this green hat and this purple jacket. These were gifts Mr. Krabs bought her on their first date, but she ended up feeling uncomfortable receiving them and gave them back to him. I'm afraid I just don't feel comfortable accepting all well, these Oh, she feel gifts. comfortable stealing Except them. apparently she's not too uncomfortable to steal them back afterwards. So clearly Mrs. Pub isn't stealing this stuff because she wants to use it. She just steals for the thrill of it. Maybe stealing things is her way of coping with the insanity of her everyday life. And remember, this isn't the first time she's gone insane. You can get through this without losing your sanity. Oh, that's a road we don't want to go down again. In fact, I have reason to believe that she started stealing things way back whenever she first went insane. I hope I still remember how to do this. I don't think she's just talking about remembering how to make balloon animals. Car. She's probably also referring to remembering how to steal a boat. Her and boat. if that's not enough for you, in a SpongeBob comic book, she actually admits that she used to rob banks and she wears the exact same ski mask. Mrs. Puff lives a completely delusional and miserable life, all because she has to teach SpongeBob how to drive. It's led her to steal from the people she cares about and completely disassociate SpongeBob's from a her. homewrecker. But that begs a very important question. If Spongebob is causing her life to be so miserable, then why does she even keep teaching him? Exactly. After all the destruction and pain he's caused, she'd totally be justified to expel him, right? I mean, she will literally try and kill him so she doesn't have to teach him, but for some reason she can't just expel him. It's almost like there's someone forcing her to teach Spongebob. Back to the episode No Free Rides, after prematurely giving Spongebob a license, she steals his boatmobile so he can't hurt anyone. In the end, this causes her to get arrested and go to jail, but then Spongebob tells her this. And besides, the warden says she'll let you go early, if you do her a favor. What's that? Free driving lessons! She'll get to leave prison early if she gives free driving lessons. That seems like an oddly specific mm. requirement. And that's not the only time this gets mentioned either. In Season 9, Episode 5, Bumper to Bumper, we get this scene. If only Spongebob could pass his boating test, 
He'd be out of my life once and for all. Unfortunately, I keep getting reminded of the consequences if I get too angry with the little nuisance. Consequences? Are you telling me that if she refuses to teach Spongebob specifically, she'll be violating her parole and get sent back to jail? Why does the prison even care if Mrs. Puff teaches Spongebob? Is it just part of some weird community service? But things hmm. start to get really suspicious at the end of Season 7, Episode 5, Summer Job. Once again, Mrs. Puff ends up in jail, but this time she's forced to go to a prison boating school. Oh, wow. Prison boating school? Class. Yeah, because Day I think she got class. in trouble driving. Ah! I must be having a nightmare. What's he doing here? Ugh. Dear Mrs. Puff, I'm following in your footsteps and got a job as a driver's ed teacher for the summer. Mm. Ah! Who in their right mind would hire SpongeBob to do this after he's literally destroyed the city an countless evil times person. while driving? Is this just another one of Mrs. Puff's delusions? Or is the prison intentionally forcing her to be around SpongeBob just to torture her? I mean, look at the way the guard forces her to sit there and listen to him. Get me out of here! Oh, 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 ow, oh, ow, ah, oh. And look at that evil smile he has <laughs> as he watches her endure this torture. There is something very strange going on with this prison. Then, in Season 10, Episode 8, The Getaway, Mrs. Puff meets a criminal named Dorsal Dan and starts to get romantic feelings for him. This is also while she's still dating Mr. Krabs. Shame on you, Mrs. <laughs> Puff. At the end of the episode, they both accidentally land in prison, and the warden puts him in solitary confinement. Warden, I found this one pulling up outside the prison. Dorsal Dan, a notorious getaway driver. Toss him the clink. I'll wait for you, my little tender boy. <laughs> In or out of jail, this prison will stop at nothing to make sure she is alone and miserable. But why? Who's behind all of this? this why would anyone care this much about torturing Mrs. Puff? Who's the mastermind pulling the strings? Well, maybe it has something to do with her old life yeah, in New Kelp like City. Maybe she crossed someone and they've been plotting the their revenge ever since. Person? But I've looked in every single frame of New Kelp City and there is nothing connecting it back to the prison. I've looked literally everywhere and there's not a single person from the city that has anything to do with Mrs. Puff. Or is there? Well, I mean, maybe except for the literal warden of the prison she's being kept in. He may be hiding slightly off screen, but that is clearly the same warden of the Bikini Bottom prison. And this isn't some random background character that the show reuses all the time, he is a very distinct character. You can call me out on the Squilliam video all you want, but not this time. But wait a second, wait a second. If the warden was originally from New Kelp City, then he'd probably know about Mrs. Puff's dark past and her true identity. So. Why hasn't he exposed her? He's just kept quiet about the fact that one of his inmates is living a completely false identity. She'd probably even get more prison time when they find out who she really is, so why hasn't he said anything? This is where things get very like interesting. Together. So, we know Mrs. Puff prematurely gave a student at her original boating school a license, and that led to them causing chaos and destruction. Maybe this student accidentally did something terrible to the warden, and he's blamed Mrs. Puff ever since. Whatever happened was so terrible that it caused him to move to Bikini Bottom and get a job as the warden of the town's prison. And to his surprise, he finds out that one of his inmates is actually the person he blames for that terrible thing happening. This works out perfectly for him. He can finally get his revenge on Mrs. Puff by making her life miserable. All he has to do is reveal her dark secret and she'll be stuck in jail for much longer. Except for one small issue with his plan. Mrs. Puff actually likes being in prison. One day down, 2,528 to go. Oh, that's just shy of four years without SpongeBob. I'm going to enjoy this. So he comes up with a new plan. Keep Mrs. Puff's secret and let her out of prison early, but only under the condition that she has to teach SpongeBob. He's literally turning her normal life into a prison. And he makes sure going back to prison to avoid SpongeBob isn't even an option for her anymore because he'll make sure that SpongeBob is always in there with her. And he's not gonna let her escape and start a new life like she did in New Kelp City. He makes sure to give her an ankle bracelet that doesn't let her leave Bikini Bottom. I can't even leave town without violating my parole. He is Ow. the mastermind who's been controlling everything what this entire time. But guess what? 
His insidious yes, plan doesn't even end there. This is not the first time we've seen the Warden character. We first see him in Season 4, Episode 2, Crabs vs. Plankton. In this episode, Plankton slips on some water in the Krusty Krab and decides to sue Mr. Krabs for everything he owns. And then guess who shows up out of nowhere and offers to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer? What I really need is a good lawyer. Hello, did somebody say lawyer? Richard A. Bottom Feeder, attorney at law. I couldn't help but notice that despicable display. Richard A. Bottom Feeder, the warden of the Bikini Bottom Prison is also apparently a lawyer? <laughs> That's kind of strange. Those both sound like major careers. You usually wouldn't imagine someone being both. Then he says he'll be Mr. Krabs' lawyer completely free of charge. So, uh, how much is this gonna cost me? Actually, I won't charge a dime unless we win. Well, that's awfully generous of you, Richard. He seems very confident that he can win the case, but right before he goes to court, he slips on some water and says SpongeBob will have to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer now. Oh, this is gonna be a slam d- Oh, no! Mr. Krabs' lawyer, speak to me! Wrapped with pain, can't move. Looks like you're gonna have to handle this one, son. He tells SpongeBob that he has to represent Mr. Krabs, even though he himself called SpongeBob a liability. Actually, SpongeBob, we won't be needing any testimony from you. Why, you'd be more of a, uh... <laughs> of a liability than an asset. But it's okay, because apparently all SpongeBob needs to win is inside of Richard's briefcase. Everything you need to win <laughs> is in this here case. <laughs> really? Slams. Except when SpongeBob gets to court, he realizes that Richard never gave him the combination to the case. It's uh, all in here. Really? Yep, right in here. Is there a problem? Uh, your lawyer didn't give me the combination. Either Richard A. Bottom Feeder is the worst lawyer in history, or this is all part of his elaborate plan to ruin Mrs. Puff's life. Here's what I think happened. First, he finds out that Mr. Krabs is being sued, and he wants to ensure that Mr. Krabs loses the case because he wants to destroy any chance Mrs. Puff has at finding love. So he pretends to be a lawyer, even offering his services for free, something Mr. Krabs can't resist. He makes Mr. Krabs feel confident that they're gonna win the case, and then at the last second, he pretends to get into an accident so he can't represent Mr. Krabs. Instead of finding a real lawyer to replace him, he tells the most incompetent person for the job, SpongeBob, that he has to be Mr. Krabs' lawyer. And he gives him a case that allegedly has all the answers in it without actually giving SpongeBob the combination, setting him up for a total failure in court. Richard A. Bottom Feeder refuses to let anyone get close to Mrs. Puff. Not Dorsal Dan, and not Mr. Krabs. This guy has squillion levels of hate for Mrs. Puff. But why? You have what a crush exactly on her and she rejected him? That warrants this much torture. It can't be something as simple as him or his property getting damaged. It has to be something life-changing. Something like losing a loved one because of the student's reckless driving. Oh. And I think the show gives us one last hint about who this might have been. All the pictures of Mrs. Puff's house are very meaningful to her. She's got photos of Mr. Krabs, her pet snail, and of course those infinitely looping photos that told us so much about her mental state. But there is one more photo in this house that might be the key to this entire conspiracy. In season 12, episode 14, Plankton's Old Chum, we see a photo of someone we've never seen before on Mrs. Puff's wall. There's some surprising similarities between this character and Richard. The green color, the red bow tie, the overall fancy, serious appearance, it clearly is isn't the same person, but maybe this is someone related to Richard. Like a father, a son, or a brother that Mrs. Puff's former student killed. And the reason she keeps a photo of him up is to have a permanent reminder to never make the same mistake of giving someone a license who doesn't deserve it. Mrs. Puff is a boating school teacher who once made a terrible mistake that led to the loss of her business, identity, sanity, and any chance at finding happiness. I like to think that there used to be a time when she was happy, back when her husband was still alive. If only he was still around today, maybe she wouldn't have to face all of this on her own. Thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. more. Is what I would say if I was done, except her husband is still alive! Woo! Let's do this! In the Spongebob movie, Spongebob and Patrick travel to a gift shop named Shell City that's full of dead fish turned into knickknacks and ornaments. And they're revived. Except they end up setting off the smoke detector, Remember? which activates the sprinkler system and brings all the dead fish back to life, including a very familiar looking puffer fish hanging from the ceiling. Mr. Puff is alive. Well, wait a second. If he's alive and he escaped, then why hasn't he gone back to Mrs. Puff? 
why is she still alone? <laughs> because remember, she ran away from their home in New Kelp City and started a new right. identity. So sadly, Mr. Puff has no way of finding her. The tragedy of Mrs. Puff's story is that her happiness is just a city away, but she can never even leave town because that would violate her parole. Richard A. Bottom Feeder probably even knows her husband is alive and is making sure they're never reunited. As the name says, Richard really is a bottom feeder. This video took a ton of time and effort to do all the research for, so I really hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching, and thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this theory. Go to nordvpn.com slash alexbale or use code alexbale. Oh, it's getting weird. I think this might have to do with the ARG. Why? Meat. Happy meat farms. <laughs> I don't know. Is it a sacrifice? <gasps> He's feeding it to something. This is the same thing. Is that happy mother? They're connected. They said that Alex Bale is connected to Happy Meat Farms, which is why we started watching it. He just threw a bag of meat to something. Number four. Was that what it said on the back of that? Yes. Is it instructions on the fourth conspiracy? Like he's being made to do this? That is so freaking creepy. I got goosebumps. My hair is standing up. You are so into this. Look it. <laughs> well, it said number four. <laughs> and it was a me, and he threw it. It must be Mother. It probably is, but why is Mother so obsessed with Spongebob? There. It's finally. It's connecting. Spongebob is connected this is intriguing. to this. Overall, what do you think of the Mrs. Puff theory? I think it was pretty actually good. I mean, some things were a little far-fetched. But the overall premise of her being crazy and having a past life, that I believed. I think maybe some of the stuff he was guessing, like the relation with the, the guy, was a, a little bit of, you know, a reach, but the whole her being a kleptomaniac and... I mean, there's a lot. Small. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was real. I mean, it wasn't too far-fetched where it's like, okay, man, I'm like, I think you're stretching this a bit too far. Yeah. It was pretty, like, believable, and it could be true. I can't believe there's so much depth into something like that. It just really shows you how big, well, like, the universe of SpongeBob is, and it's just beyond what anyone would know as just a kid or even a parent watching, and it's, it's just cool. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Sprosis effect, goodbye. Bye.